So for us to talk about age-related changes that happen to the urinary system, we first have to go over a few of the functions and kind of the basic processes that are occurring in the urinary system that might be affected by age. And so um, when we refer to the urinary system, it's really made up of kind of three main parts. It's made up of the kidney, which is where kind of a lot of the magic happens, um, as well as the bladder, <laughs> which is a storage site for urine, and then the tubes that connect the bladder to the kidneys, so the ureters, and then the tubes that allow urine to be expelled from the body, which is the urethra. And so in terms of overall function of the urinary system, one of the functions is to filter the blood, to remove any metabolic wastes and get rid of them, as well as to maintain the water and the electrolyte balance um, in the body. And so when we think about age-related changes related to the urinary system, sometimes uh, we think about urinary incontinence or the inability to control urination, which is actually something that is not related to a decline in the urinary system function, but rather to a decline in the skeletal muscle function that allows um, basically a release of urine from the body. However, one thing that does change over time in the, in the urinary system is kidney function. And so we're going to first talk about what kidneys do and how they function in order to understand um, how that decline happens. Okay, so the kidney's main function is to filter blood. And so you can see a cross section, <laughs> a longitudinal cross section of a kidney here where there's an artery that supplies blood to the kidney and a renal vein where that blood leaves. And so since the kidney's function is to filter blood, blood has to come in through the renal artery. It gets filtered in these uh, small sections here called nephrons, which we'll talk about later. And then that filtered blood can leave through the renal vein. And so as I said, blood is filtered in specific kind of functional units of the kidney called nephrons. And so as you follow the blood through an artery, you can see in red here, <coughs> that blood enters into this nephron area. Um, and you can see that it actually comes together into this small area, uh, basically of condensed blood vessels called the glomerulus. And the glomerulus um, is surrounded by a tubule or capsule of fluid called the Bowman's capsule where things can be moved in and out of the blood. And then once blood leaves the glomerulus, it goes down here where it runs parallel with another collecting tubule. And then some there's some movement of fluids in and out as well as solutes in and out. And then the blood comes back up. There's a little bit more movement of solutes in and out and then now that filtered clean blood can leave through this vein. And so <clears throat> in terms of what's happening in each part of these of the nephron, I'm going to talk a little bit about these terms here, right? So glomerular filtration happens in the glomerulus, which is this clump of blood vessels surrounded by Bowman's capsule. And in this part of the process of blood filtration, fluid and molecules are moved out of the blood in the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. And so you can see the movement of fluids and molecules in yellow arrow here. And this is mostly driven by a differential in pressure. So as you remember, arteries will have a higher pressure than veins, and so pressure can actually drive, and the difference <coughs> in pressure actually drives things out of the blood into the Bowman's capsule itself. And then that fluid can, can actually enter into this tubule here. And the blood vessel running along it um, can actually exchange fluids and molecules between this blood and this tubule, right? And that's kind of what is known as tubular resorption. And so some resorption of the fluid and molecules that got removed and put into the Bowman's capsule actually occurs here, right? And so some of that fluid moves back into the blood or that water. Some of those molecules move back into the blood or are resorbed into the blood. And then ultimately, 
there's one last filtration step of fluid and molecules where those are moved back out um, of the blood into this tubule, this collecting duct here, and then taken to the, um, via the ureters to the bladder for removal. Right. And this process of blood entering the kidney, um, undergoing glomerular filtration, and then resorption and secretion happens about 60 times a day. <laughs> right, and so to take a closer look at the nephron here, I'm um, actually see what's coming in and out of the different parts of it. I've included this image, right? And so you can see here that some of the things coming out of the blood into the collecting tubules are molecules like sugars, glucose, amino acids, proteins, as well as ions like sodium and potassium. And so those things tend to come out of the blood, as you can see by the directional arrow here, right? And then um, the kidney does also has a function in taking away wastes from the body, right? And so in this case, wastes like urea, uric acid, different drugs, as well as hydrogen ions can actually go into the collecting tubule so that they can ultimately be excreted. Here you can see water coming out, urea, another waste product going in. In this case, you can see some of that salt balance occurring, so sodium and chloride ions coming out, entering back into the blood where they might need it. The same up here. And ultimately, I hope this just illustrates that there are a lot of things that need to move into the collecting tubule and then potentially be resorbed by tubular resorption into the blood based on the body's needs. Anything that the body doesn't need can be removed as a waste product. And so because kidneys adjust the amount of water in the blood by collecting or resorbing fluids, um, kidneys actually affect the blood pressure, right? So um, when water moves from urine in the collecting tubule into the blood, the blood pressure increases, right? Because you have more liquid, more volume in the blood, water is moving in that direction and the more volume on a small artery, the more pressure you generate. And the opposite is true when water moves in the opposite direction, from the blood or your fluids into the collecting tubule into urine, and that leads to a decrease in blood pressure. And in general, as we sort of know, water tends to follow, follow salt, right? And so wherever there's a high concentration of salts, like sodium um, and chloride ions, water will move towards this high concentration of salt in order to kind of try to create an equilibrium. And so if there is high salt levels in your blood, then um, water will try to move from urine to blood to alleviate that high salt level um, and bring your body back into homeostasis. And so one thing <coughs> that kind of changes, you know, where water is moving is this principle of following salt. Another is the fact that the renal tubules have different permeabilities, um, and that means that they have different chances of water being able to move in and out, or different ability of water to move in and out. And that permeability is affected by hormones. In particular, there's one hormone, the antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, which helps increase water resorption out of the blood and back into the tubules. <coughs> And so we tend to think of a diuretic as something that makes us pee a lot, right? And therefore, a diuretic is something that actually increases the volume of water in the urine, making us have to pee. Antidiuretic hormone does the opposite thing. It increases water reabsorption back into the blood so that there's less water in the urine and less of a chance of having to pee. But mostly the permeability of kind of the renal tubule is affected by hormones. And so what happens as we age, right? The first thing that really affects kidney function as we age is blood flow to the kidney. And that blood flow is clearly important as you can see that in the nephron, um, these, those functional units of the kidney, you have tubules surrounded by a series of capillaries, right? And the blood needs to be able to move in and out 
to be able to be filtered, right? And so if that blood flow is declining, kidney function is declining. Ultimately, as we age, there are less blood vessels. There's also some twisting of blood vessels and narrowing of blood vessels. And you can actually see an example of blood vessel narrowing here in this image on the top. This is a process known as insidation, um, and it's driven by a condition called fibrointimal hyperplasia. And so there's a region of the kidney tubule called the intima, and you can actually see here it labeled with this arrow. And fibrointimal hyperplasia is basically just a <laughs> accumulation of fibrous material in the intima section of this tubule. And it actually decreases the diameter of the blood vessels in the kidney. And by decreasing the blood flow to the kidney, we decrease the filtration rate, right? Um, and in general, in the glomerulus, which is that kind of amalgamation of blood vessels, <coughs> blood flow has been shown to decrease 10% per decade. Um, and it actually happens at a relatively um, even rate as we age, right? And so glomerul um, kidney function actually starts declining relatively early in life and continues at a pretty steady pace of 10% per decade after that. And since blood flow is decreasing to the kidney, um, that leads to a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate or the GFR, right? And so glomerular filtration is basically the movement of that blood out of the glomerulus, which are the blood vessels here, into the Bowman's capsule, which is the first like collecting tubule, right? And that happens immediately. And as I said before, this is driven by a pressure differential, right? And so it's important that there's a correct pressure between the blood vessels in the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. And if that pressure gets kind of deteriorated or messed up, um, that can affect how well the glomerular the glomerulus is able to filter the blood. Um, the rate at which glomerular filtration decreases is variable, especially compared to this nice uh, decrease in blood flow that we described just a minute ago. But most of the defects in glomerular filtration rate are not necessarily just caused by blood flow, but by a specific hardening of the arteries um, or the blood vessels in the glomerulus called glomerular sclerosis. Glomerular sclerosis, as I said, is sort of a thickening and hardening of the blood vessels in the glomerulus. It can actually lead to their shrinkage, as you can see here um, in this example or this cartoon. And it tends to be correlated with high blood pressure because you can imagine that a hardening or a in decrease in the flexibility of blood vessels leads to an increase in blood pressure. And that higher blood pressure decreases the filtration rate here means that your blood is not filtered uh, quite as often. And ultimately, the decrease in blood flow as well as the decrease in the filtration rate of blood are what really leads, um, or what really highlight kind of the major age-related changes that occur in the urinary system.